Hello, friends. Welcome to another kitchen table vlog. I cannot see. <laughs> okay, I can't see nothing. Hi. Hey, hi, hello. Um, I'm going to make my water. I like to use seltzer water or club soda and a strawberry water enhancer. That's what I normally drink. Okay, so and this is going to be kind of a catch-up video. Not catch-up as in on fries, but like catching you up. If you missed it, I posted a video this past weekend about everything that has gone on with my spine from start to finish. <laughs> and I share all of the kind of minimally invasive pain management things that I've done to kind of mitigate everything. And yeah, so that video is up. I actually wore makeup in that video. I considered it today, but I, I've been kind of weepy. So I decided not to. So trigger warnings for this video. I'm going to be talking a lot about mental health and my treatment for that. We're going to be talking about what happened with the neurosurgeon. All of the blah, 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 blah blobs. But before we get into that, if you've been following along for the last year, <laughs> I have been clinging to nostalgia, like clinging to it. And I think it... No, I don't think. I know it's because it just reminds me of a easier time in my life. Oh, by the way, this is April 3rd. I'm filming this on April 3rd. Rob and I met 15 years ago today. <laughs> and eight years, we've spent eight years dealing with this. So more than half our marriage. So that's just the thought for the day. But anyway, I've just been clinging to nostalgia. I bought, It started with a strawberry shortcake sweater that... Um, Hot Topic had and then it was a strawberry shortcake hoodie that had the Hot Topic had and then there were strawberry shortcake shirts I've got a couple of Care Bear shirts and recently I picked up a couple other things I joined the strawberry shortcake buy and sell group on Facebook and this one seller has these cute little miniatures and like the little curio case they go in and I'm just like oh I want it so bad <laughs> I'm not gonna get it so I unfollowed that group, but I was like, oh, there's so many cute, and like somebody had the house, and I'm just like, I had the house, had all the furniture. If I could go back, I would have saved all of that, and I didn't. But anyway, I'm bringing that up because Amazon knows that I've been in all the nostalgia, and my nephew just turned three last week, and we're having this party this weekend, and I just couldn't help myself. Pound puppies, we want to go home. So yeah, I got him a pound puppy. I remember my brother and I both having one. I had the cute little white poodle um, that didn't stay white very long. But I, I think that I think that toy is around at my mother's house somewhere. Maybe it's not. But yeah, so I got that, and then I picked me up a couple of things. Isn't she so cute? Oh my goodness. <laughs> So these are on Amazon. I paid $12 a piece for them. There's no telling how much they are now. Um, who are they by? TLS Toy. Uh, if you go to if you go to Amazon and type in strawberry shortcake doll, it'll pop up. But she's so cute. I love her so much. And then I picked up where she's just by herself. I'm still on the fence of whether or not these are actually gonna come out of the boxes. I haven't quite decided. Oh, are they doing all of them? Oh, damn. Wait, are they doing all of them? Cause I didn't see any other ones for sale. I might have to look it up. Anyway, clinging to nostalgia. So, pound puppy for him, strawberry shortcake for me. I've got a strawberry shortcake phone case. I'd show you, but I'm recording this on my phone. So I've really been clinging to nostalgia because life has just been so much bullshit. So I have what my psychiatrist has deemed medicine resistant depression. And I started a treatment called Sparvato, S-P-A-R-V-A-T-O. And it's basically a medication for people who have medicine resistant depression. So it is an inhalant. It's got keter, ketamine, keter, ketamine in it. Is that the one that they give you at the hospital? 
and a couple other things in it. And one of the things that it's supposed to do is it's supposed to help heal your brain, like actually heal the brain where you've had the trauma or whatever um, to help you able to process it better and stuff like that. And my fourth dose today, um, the first two doses last week, not that big a deal. I slept the first day. Um, the second day, I just kind of just sat with my AirPods in my ear and listened to some music and stuff like that. Um, this week, we bumped up to the highest dose, and oh my god, oh my gosh, it was awful. I literally had dry heaves. I was like, I, it's in a, like a, they have it in a room with a recliner, and it's like quiet and stuff like that. And she comes in every 30 minutes to check my blood sugar, get my vital, I'm not blood sugar, blood pressure and stuff and get my vitals. And she came in, I had like the trash can. She's like, oh no. I was like, oh. I, <clears throat> it literally felt like I had vertigo. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And if you've had vertigo, you know what I'm talking about. That kind of like woozy, like motion sickness kind of thing. And I didn't have anything on my stomach. And I'm glad I didn't because, oof. And I was just, I didn't think I was going to make it out to the car. I just kind of felt drunk. And today I was a little worried. I was like, oh my gosh. But today I actually did better than I've done the other three days. I kind of sat for about an hour, I think, <clears throat> just listening to Pandora and just kind of, you know, breathing and just kind of taking my breath and uh, taking my breath, just kind of taking it in and trying to just be as relaxed and chill as possible and I felt like I was so much better <clears throat> it still leaves me a little like drunk if you've never been drunk I don't know what to tell you what it feels like <laughs> um, I've been drunk twice <clears throat> in my younger years so sorry I think this is also from it as well because it's an inhalant so I met with my therapist today face to face this is the first time we've had a face to face um, interaction and I see her I said I saw her first before I had the um, the treatment and we did bilateral something something and I told her she's like what what did it feel like and I was like I felt like I could literally feel which side of my brain was clicking on it was so weird but we just did like a quiet calm place we've done that before and we spent about, I don't know, probably almost all of the session doing that. <clears throat> but we also talked about um, what had happened. I had sent her the link to the video that I filmed where I talked about all of that that happened. Not this past one, but the one before that. Where I'm at the kitchen table and was like, it's worse than what I thought. That one. And she was like, I, she's like, every time I see you, it's just something worse. And I'm like, yeah. And so I told her, I said, you know, I went to this doctor's appointment and I said, I told the doctor, I feel lost. Like this feels like it came out of the blue. And if I hadn't made a flippant comment to that neurosurgeon from Northwestern, we wouldn't be here today. But if I hadn't made that flippant comment to that neurosurgeon in six to eight, 10 months, I may, may have been in a wheelchair, unable to walk. So, um, I've been dealing with a lot. She's like, you've had a lot of trauma the last couple of weeks. I'm like, yeah. no, she's like, Misty, you've dealt with a lot of trauma the last couple of weeks. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. So I do think the Sparvato is working. I'll find out next week. Um, there's a scale that they, you do. I did it when we started and I did one today and I already knew that some of my answers were a little better. Some of my answers stayed the same. So, I mean, my hope is that I just start to feel like I can function and I haven't felt that way in a while. Like I've, I was saying, I don't care and I don't care that I don't care, but I, um, I don't care, but I'm starting to care that I don't care. So I feel like I'm starting to like turn the corner or whatever it's called. So yeah, it is, um, would I recommend it? I don't know yet. Let me finish. I've got two more weeks of two days a week. And then I go to four weeks of one day a week. And I'm there for two hours because I have to monitor your blood pressure. This morning, before we started, my blood pressure was 93 over 59. So I'm going to talk to my regular doctor about that next week. Because it's like, okay, why is my blood pressure so low? Which is kind of weird. Because this is supposed to raise your blood pressure and it hasn't.
at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what's going on with the mental health stuff. Um, I told her today, like, you know, I still, there's still a part of me that's just like, mm, I don't care. But the other part of me is like, Misty, you, you, you have to get it done. Whether you want to or not, you have to put your big girl panties on and get shit done. Because, <sighs> stupid dog. I mean, the dog isn't stupid, but he doesn't like being outside longer than using the bathroom. It's our neighbor's dog. And anytime he's left out longer than five minutes, he barks until they come and let him in. And, it, and we have the windows open because it's so nice here today. I'm very thirsty, so sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to cry, and I apologize, but I cried in my appointment. I'm going to cry here too. So if you are new here and you're like, what the hell is she going on and on about? Okay, so I have been dealing with back issues since fifth or sixth grade. And the last few years, I've been dealing with a pinched nerve in my lower back. And I had initially gone, I initially, um, go watch that video if you want specifics. But I met with a doctor from Second MD. Second MD is a an employee benefit for my husband and you call, tell him what's going on and you basically get a second opinion. And I've, I've said this, I don't know that it's a hundred percent sure, a sure thing, but I feel like they work with doctors who are affiliated with colleges or universities because the first time I used them, I spoke to someone from Columbia university. This time I spoke with someone affiliated with Northwestern university and we were talking about my back. He's like, you need a, he's like, you need a lumbar fusion L1 all the way down. And I was like, Okay, and then he was talking, either he said something about my spinal cord, I said, or he's talking about stenosis, and I made a flippant comment about how, yeah, I'd been told, like, there's not a whole lot of space around my spinal cord and my neck. He's like, Misty, that is way more important than this. So on the 20th, he and I talked, and he basically told me that the compression that is on my spinal cord is enough to cause paralysis, and he didn't understand why the surgeon didn't want to operate and sent me home to deteriorate. That's his word, not mine, deteriorate. And I was just, I've shared the MRI image. I'm not going to share it again. Again, you can watch that video. But to see it next to a healthy spine, it's insanity. It's insanity. And like I said, the one thing I've been struggling with, and I talked to my therapist about it today, I was just like, he, I feel like he took my choice. He took my choice because his PA was like, he's going to want to do a fusion. He's going to want to do it soon. She made it sound like it was dire, which it was. And then the script flipped when he got from vacation. And I was just like, she's like, he's not inclined to offer you a surgery. And I said, does this mean it's not serious enough for surgery? And she said, yes, it's not serious enough for surgery. Well, that wasn't the, that's not the case. 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 And if he had just said, you need surgery, but I'm not inclined to offer it. You know, you'll need to find a new doctor, something to that effect, or you need surgery, but I'm not, like something, you need surgery, but. I would have been fine with that. I would have been pissed, but I would have found a different doctor. But instead, he didn't. He sent me home and told me it wasn't that big of a deal. And that, and I went on about my way. And it, I've been getting progressively weaker every single day. Every single day, I get progressively weaker. And I am just frustrated because if I had known this was an issue back in 2022, 2023, I would have had it taken care of. But the icing on the cake is that this could be the cause of all of my weakness that was once diagnosed as myasthenia gravis, has no longer been diagnosed as myasthenia gravis. I reached out to the genetic person who's doing the new genetic testing for FSHD. He said I should have my results this weekend. We'll see what that says. So it's like six, six years. I lived with those symptoms for six years and he decided that I didn't need a surgery. And I've just been like, 
would would you be okay with that if I was a loved one? And I've just really struggled with that. I've struggled with the fact that there's no repercussions. There's no accountability. You know, it's just, it's just hard because it's like he took away my choice. Because back then I could have decided whether or not I wanted surgery right away. And now I don't have a choice. Well, I, yeah, I do. My choice is surgery or paralysis. And I would rather not live in a wheelchair right now. I'm a little young for that. So, went and saw the new neurosurgeon yesterday, and it was a night and day difference. A night and day difference. And they had all of my paperwork, they had all of my imaging, they had all of the test results, and the PA came in first, and she was like, you have been through it. And I said, I've been through it. I said, yeah. And she's like, okay, walk me through everything. And I did, and she was just like, okay. <laughs> so... They did the flick test on your finger and I think it's called the Hoffman test. I don't know if it, like, I don't know. They didn't tell me what happened with it or not. But um, she was like, I'm going to talk. She's like, the doctor's looking at your images right now. We'll have her come in. She's going to talk to you. And she came in and, oh, you guys, it was just a nine day difference. The PA was probably one of the best PAs I've ever dealt with. She was just so kind and compassionate and empathetic and listened and didn't gaslight me. She didn't diminish what I've been going through. You know, she was just so unbelievably kind. She was like a port in storm. She's the voice I needed because I went into that appointment fucking terrified, terrified, terrified of what the outcome was going to be. And this has all just kind of happened because of a flippant comment I made. And it's just, it's a it's so much to deal with, you guys. It's so much to deal with. And I know people are like, she just likes to be sick. She just like, no, 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 no one would want this. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. This is awful. This is awful. And no one should have to put up with this whether they're 400 pounds or whether they're 120 pounds, that fucking neurosurgeon deserves to lose his license. I said it. I said what I said. I mean it. I, I told my therapist, I have felt every emotion about this. And I said, his PA said it, but I had no reason to trust her and every reason to trust him. And I put my trust in a wrong person and here we are i have to have a surgery she wants to do new imaging on all three levels she echoed that i could have 70 to 80 percent relief She said, Misty, this is a big surgery. And I said, I know. She said, there's a high risk of infection. She said that most people who have it done, they're, they have wound issues. It's an eight to 12 month recovery time. And now, and now it may be a total spine fusion. And I keep saying that ligament has cal calcium. She's like, no, that's bone. It's bone. And I was just like, oh. And this was two years ago. This was two years ago. So, <laughs> the plan of action right now is to get new imaging on all three levels. Oh, I see her in three weeks. Oh, I, they're very, <laughs> like, the last time I had to have imaging, it took two months. 
But since it's coming from a doctor's office, since I've already been dealing with pain management, they think that it will be approved really quickly. They let me go where I wanted to go. You guys know that I found a baler um, in the area that has a machine that's rated to 600 pounds, so it's a little bit wider. They're gonna send in a sedative. I'm gonna go and have all three levels done again. And then we'll meet up and discuss what has to happen. But if we do C2 to T2, and then I need L1 to L900, that's basically almost my entire spine. Has to be done from the back because it's... <sighs> Guys, we're talking about from my skull, from my skull, all the way down to my shoulder blades. From, from my skull, the back of, like right here, on the back of my skull, all the way down to my shoulder blades. It's like, what is that, 12 inches? 15 inches? And, uh, I'm just, I'm so, uh, I'm so angry about it. I'm angry about it because number one, it's not my fault. I won the genetic lottery, yay for me. Number two, I'm mad that he didn't, I'm just, that whole entire situation is just, I feel lost. I feel lost because this came out of the blue and to know that anything can cause me to stop feeling my legs at any moment in time. And this could have been resolved. I could have already taken care of this. And I went through five doctors. This is my sixth. She is my sixth doctor. Fourth neurosurgeon. She agreed with them 100%. Didn't know why he didn't operate on me in 2022 or 2023. So my goal is to get weight off as quickly as I can. I can't fast. Long-term fast while I'm on this Wagovia will make me sick. So I'm going to be doing intermittent fasting. Um, hopefully, my goal is to have a bulletproof coffee in the morning and then eat later, much later in the day. The issue is that caffeine is a stimulant. St stimulant. It's a stimulant. So you're not really supposed to have it when you're on Spravato because the Spravato is supposed to reduce your blood pressure. It doesn't raise my blood pressure, but I find that when I have caffeine on the days I do it, I have heart palpitations, like, or a racing heart, high pulse, whatever you want to call it. So I've been trying to avoid it. I don't have any decaf coffee. The, all the decaf coffee I've tried has tasted like bullshit, and I would much rather just skip coffee. But the whole idea behind having a bulletproof coffee is it's, number one, it doesn't break a fast which I didn't know until I watched Dr. Ecker, Eckers, Ecker, I don't remember his name. And then, um, because he says fat, it doesn't break a fast. So I'm, we're not here for debate. That's what he said. Go look at his video. <laughs> <laughs> believe what you want to believe, follow whatever you want to follow, whatever works for you. I'm just going by the information that is out there that I have retrieved and put in my brain. So that, and then um, I have all the ingredients to make, Victor is it Victoria? Victoria's keto flour, and I'm gonna do that because I have a craving for rosemary bread. And then I've been watching Chris cooking Nashville. If you haven't watched him, he's a recipe genius. He made carnivore noodles, and I'm gonna make carnivore noodles because they looked flipping delicious and I just, I don't know. He's made tortillas, pancakes. His McGriddles look really good. And he does like a ketovore and a carnivore um, version. And, and yeah, I, and I talked to the doctor too. And she, she was like, what do you do? And it's like, I do keto carnivore. And they were both on board with that. And the PA was like, yeah, I've heard that help, really helps with autoimmune issues too. And I was just like, 
can they tick any more boxes? <laughs> like, can they tick any more boxes? Because sometimes when you go to a doctor and you say you're doing keto or whatever, they just give you the side eye, but it works. And, and I'm lucky because I told her, I said, I basically ate whatever I wanted for the last year and a half. I've basically just eaten, don't, haven't given any care in the world. And I've basically only gained 10 pounds. Now I've gained that 10 pounds and lost it six or seven times, but I've only gained up that much because I started 2023 at 333 pounds and I started, no, 330 pounds. And I started January, 2024 at 333 pounds. So yeah, and I would really love to be under two, 300 by my birthday, which is the 29th of the month. I was at 332 the last time I weighed. I think that was Monday. And I don't know if it can happen, but my goal is just to get off as much weight as quickly as possible. After she gave me a prescription for physical therapy, she's like, would you be willing to do physical therapy? I said, yes. I said, as long as it's at my house. I said, I did it in 2017. And I said, it just made the weakness worse. And that's why we stopped. I said, you know, I'd been talking about with Rob about getting one of those bikes where you move the arms and she mentioned the recumbent bike. And I said, you know, that's, that's definitely something that's been on my mind. I said, because I can't stand for very long. I use a wheelchair at home. I had my walker with me that day. I told the PA, I said, there's no way I would have made it from our car to this office without this walker. But the issue is that walker makes my neck weird and it, it hurts worse than it helps sometimes. But especially when you go to a new doctor, like I had to be at the counter for like 10 minutes. There's no way I could have stood there for 10 minutes. There's no way. I'm terrified, you guys. Like, terrified. I made the mistake of looking at scars which led me to how they position you in the surgery. And I was just like, Missy, get off of Google. <laughs> get off of Google right now. I was freaking out, you guys. It's scary. It's so flippin' scary. And I feel like I haven't had any time to process it. Like it just, I knew that a surgery was coming, right? We talked about it. The guy in 2017 was like, you'll initially, you know, or eventually you'll have to have this operated on. The same thing was said by the neurosurgeon my, that did my lower back surgery. You know, I'm going to have to open you up from top to bottom and, you know, it'll be a surgery and we'll wait till, you know, you're just about can't walk again. I'm like, okay. And then, so it's like, we left it alone and I've worried more about my lower back, but now it's the neck and it just... I don't know. I'm just really struggling. I am really struggling with it and trying not to. I told my therapist and I talked about it today and I said, I said, it's just, I said, it's a control thing right now. It's like, I need to know what to prepare for. Like Rob and I have everything ready to go for our bathroom model, but <laughs> If I'm going to have to do the surgery, we're either going to have to think about getting a recliner or we had been talking about getting a bed that one of those Tempur-Pedics where it's split down the middle and one side can move up because it's like I, and that was something we were already talking about before this neck issue even came to the to surface because right now I have a handrail. It's one that has an elastic band that hooks up on the other side of the bed. I use a handrail to get in and out of bed. And it's like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to do that. He, I can't come home in our car, like because now I have to kind of lean down to get in. So I'm like, you'll have to rent an SUV for the day to bring me home. Like, it's like, there's all of these things. I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared. I want to know exactly what to expect from the surgery. I want to know exactly what to expect from recovery. And I know it will vary between person and person, but just a general idea of what we're dealing with. Like, I don't have a very, <laughs> am I going to wear a neck collar? Or am I going to have to wear one of those big things that holds your head? Because I have a little neck. I'm like, Anne Boleyn, look, this is a little neck. <laughs> a big gobbler. 
So it's like, it's just so very much. It's just so much. It's just so much. But 70 to 80% relief, you guys. 70 to 80% relief. I told the doctor the same things I've been telling you guys. It's like, I just want to drive again and take a shower every day. I just want to be able to drive and take a shower. I said, this has taken everything from me. Everything. Almost my life, but not. But it's taken everything. I've lost my career. I've lost my mobility. I've lost the, you know, the ability to leave the house. You know, our marriage isn't what it used to be. And there's just, so, it's just taken so much. And to know that this could have been dealt with last year. To know that if we'd done this last year, by now I probably would have been healed and maybe I would have felt better. I have to sit in my wheelchair to prep food. So the other night I made the keto chicken nuggets. It's a can, 12 ounce skin and chicken that you drain and egg cheese. That's it. And then I added in a shit ton of spices. I think keto snacks with a Z created that recipe. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, I sat in my wheelchair and I was trying to form them on the counter. And the counter is regular counter height in a kitchen. And I couldn't reach my arms up to do it. I had to open a drawer and set my bowl and my thing in the drawer so I could form them and put them on the tray to put them in the air fryer. And it's just like, like she had me lift up my arms and I could barely do it. I've had so much atrophy, so much atrophy. And it's just, and I told her about the vibration. I told her about the electric current. I told her about all of it. I talked to her about going to the hospital for the very first time for pain meds and asked for Toradol and a steroid. And I just told her all of it. And she was just, again, so incredibly kind, empathetic, compassionate, frank. She's like, I get the feeling that you want me to be frank with you. This is a hard, like she was like, I, yeah, don't put it around the bush. Don't give me no bullshit. Just tell me what it is you know, tell me so I can take care of it. So yeah, that's where we are right now. We're in a hurry up and wait pattern and you guys know how well I do with that. So hopefully the referral for the MRI goes quickly. I got a call tomorrow about um, the physical therapy. I have to find a home health physical therapist. I don't think the one I used in 2019, I think he went into being a realtor. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening. There you go, where are we at? 33 minutes, oh my gosh. So yeah, oh my word. And then I had to re-upload that video because YouTube cut it off, 10 minutes of it. And someone left a comment, thank you if that was you. They were like, uh, your intro kind of starts in the, and I was just like, what? And yeah, the video was 34 minutes long and YouTube had only uploaded 24 minutes of it. And by the time I took it down, it already had like 700 views. So I didn't delete your comment. It's a new video. I apologize for that. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I turned 46 at the end of the month. And the silver lining to all of this is that I'm gonna get this done in my 40s and not my 60s. But to know to know that this could have been the cause the entire time all of the testing I went through all of the worry and the pain the hundreds of vials of blood I've given 
the hundreds of times I've squeezed and pushed and pulled and did this, did all this bullshit. And I think I mentioned in that video, and if I didn't, I told Rob, if this is what has been the issue the entire time, I will call back every neurologist I have seen and apologize to them. Because I have roasted them over the fire this whole entire time for not knowing. And this may be why. I'm a little concerned that a neurologist didn't know what the spinal cord MRI should look like. But what do I know? <laughs> I'm just, just a fat girl. I'm just a fat girl on the internet. Trying to feel better. Mentally, physically, emotionally. I think I talked about intentions in a video. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I deleted that video or I didn't post that video. I was, I was gung-ho with intentions. I was going to send intentions for the month of April. I had all of that ready to go. And then it's just like a bomb went off in my lap. But my goal is to get as much weight off as possible. Stay as low-carb keto as possible. Um, like I said, I want Chris Cooking Nashville has a couple of recipes that I really want to try. Rob's like, what is purdy shrimp? <laughs> like little baby shrimps so um yeah they look like they're a lot of work but I think it's going to be worth it so we'll see I'm not buying a crepe pan though can't talk me into that I just I really just want accountability for him. I really just want relief for me. I would really like the next 15 years of our marriage to be a little bit smoother sailing. I would love to be able to go back out, be active, go, and do, go on dates and go to the movies. And, you know, we used to go every weekend before, after we this house before we bought this house I don't remember we went to open houses every weekend we went to model homes every weekend like we were out and about and we just haven't been because I just can't and it's such a pain in the butt having to get the rollator and deciding where we're gonna park and blah 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 it's such a pain in the butt and is there a chance that this surgery I will have other pain yeah yeah but 70 to 80% relief of this weakness is just more than I could ask for. I hope you guys are doing well. We have had beautiful weather. We had storms on Monday night, but by the time they got to us, they had, we didn't even get any rain. It just kind of went... <laughs> built back together which was fine because Rob had put lawn patch he's like I just put lawn patch down and it's gonna rain and wash it all away and it didn't so good for him he has been working his tail off and I think it was yesterday he mentioned he's like yeah everything you've been through I said no everything we've been through I said you have been through this just as much as I have and my therapist was like, you got a good one. And I said, I sure as hell did. I sure as hell did. I, he has, he has stuck around even when like I failed him as a wife because of all of this, you know, I've given him plenty of outs, but he said, nope, I made my vows. I'm going to stay. And more than anything, like, like I said, I want to drive. I want to be able to shower myself. Because I want to lessen his load. He has to dress me. He dries me. If we didn't have this new shower, he would probably be bathing me. You know, and I just, I don't know. I just, we just, we just deserve more. And everything I've read said that Taurus is, like the last 20 years have been rough. Like the hell they have been. <laughs> 
why didn't somebody tell me that's what this was? And like, I need to get back. Like, she's like, you have to practice this calm place every day, Misty. And I was like, I need to get back into meditating. I need to get back into a, like a skincare and body care routine because I am so flipping dry. Excuse me. So, yeah. I will keep you posted, of course. I may go back to full day of eating vlogs. I'm not really sure. Um, I'll probably film if I mess around with either the keto um, Victoria's flower or uh, Chris's, some of Chris's uh, recipes. So yeah. Anyway, this has gotten entirely too long. I love you guys so much. I appreciate you very, very much. And yeah, if, again, if you could say a prayer, light a candle, talk to your angels, whatever you can do to just kind of help us get the answers and help this be a solution and help me get through surgery and everything that that entails, I'd really appreciate it. Love you guys. Bye for now.